At a symposium, Democratic Senator Hirono was asked what Democrats must do to connect with voters. One of the things that we uh, Democrats um, have a really hard time uh, is connecting to people's hearts instead of here. We're really good at shoving out all the information that touch people here but not here. And I have been saying at all of our Senate Democratic retreats that we need to speak to the heart, not in a manipulative way, not in a way that brings forth everybody's fears and, and resentments, but truly to speak to the heart so that people know that we're actually on their side. Mm, then they sing Kumbaya. So wait a second. The problem with Democrats are that they're too intellectual as opposed to emotional. This uh, from a person who slammed all men in one burst of rage. It's the men in this country, and I just want to say to the men in this country, just shut up and step up. I don't know about you, but I don't see that as connecting with anyone's brain, Oof. unless you mean hitting somebody over the head with a mallet. The real problem, it's the opposite of her diagnosis, and it was captured in that juvenile outburst from the Kavanaugh hearings. Anger focused against others for being others. It's weaponized identity. I suggest more mutual understanding, connecting with common sense that we all share, and share is the key word there. Problem with Democrats, as I see it, is the desire to pull apart rather than pull together. For a liberal, it's hard to even admit that patriotism is a good thing. It's so old, crusty, and mean. Instead, look backward with shame and then define all present relationships as oppressive. The result is split people up into envy driven factions of grievance. The result of that, a senator who denigrates all men as guilty parties. That doesn't come from the heart or the brain. It comes from Maisie Hirono, who still owes us dudes a serious apology. Although it'll never happen. All right, Dana, what do you make of her analysis that they're, you know, they connect too much with the brain and need to connect with the heart? Well, I feel like it's just a variation on the deplorables theme. Mm -hmm. um, because we can't possibly uh, expect, you know, people in America to understand how intellectually superior the Democrats are, supposedly. Um, what's interesting is actually conservatives have been blamed for this in the past as well, right? That right. Uh, you talk too much about the deficit and the debt and you're too much about personal responsibility. And remember, that's actually, you know, frankly, it was something that was said about George H.W. Bush. And how did Bill Clinton differentiate himself? What did he say? I feel your pain. Feel your pain. He and also tried to right. feel other things as well, <laughs> but we won't get into that now. Indeed. Yes. Um, and, and so I, I think that um, Hillary Clinton has the problem, and it's the reverse. Yes. For, Donald Trump is able to actually connect with people emotionally, and they're so frustrated because they can't get the facts out. The facts, the facts, the facts. Yes. Um, so it'll be fun, you know, to kind of see this 2020 uh, class of Democrats. I think we're up to, I, I think we're now down from 40. I'm down to like 38 now. <laughs> yeah, we lost uh, Avenetti. He counts as a And we lost Deval Patrick today. Yeah. Oh, did we? Oh, geez. Yeah. There goes my voting poll. Sandra, uh, <laughs> what do you make of this? Dems are using their brains too much. Well, we welcome a lot of Democrats on America's Newsroom. You probably noticed in the yes. morning. Quite a few of them do come on with us. And, and I, t I tend to always ask them, as I ask Republicans, what is your message? Because part of the problem for Democrats is they're not saying what they stand for. And, you know, if you were to translate her saying we shove a lot of information out there, Greg, that's we put a lot of talking points out there. So part of the resist movement is to say things and, and not act. And to Dana's point, Republicans have had a hard time with that historically as well, talking about tax cuts or deficit. Like, what is this going to mean at the end of the day for your family? You've got to appeal to their heart. So for Democrats, it's going to take action because there's a whole lot of talk right now. You know, Jesse, I, I don't buy what she's saying. She's saying they use their brains too much, but <laughs> it seems like they don't understand due process biology, the necessity of free markets or economics, patriotism or community. That seems like they're not thinking at all. Uh, permission to make an analogy, Greg? Yes, I would love that. Okay. <laughs> um, she's totally misdiagnosed this. This would be like Donald Trump saying, you know what, I'm too polite. <laughs> I'm too politically correct. I'm trying to forge too much consensus. I'm going to be more brash, and I'm going to hit immigration harder. I haven't done that enough. Um, it's, it's, you know, first of all, the, the Democratic Party has always put 
emotions over facts. Look at the Kavanaugh hearing. Right. All the facts were on his side, and they wanted you to believe this woman who had no facts. Look at the Parkland school shooting. Everything was saying this is a failure of the FBI, the state, the local, the police, and the Democrats wanted you to hate in your heart the NRA or any government program that the Democrats put forth. They don't care how much it costs. They don't even care if it really works that well. They just want to show voters that they're compassionate and that they care about you. I think her real issue was She's not connecting with the working class voters of the country because they're fixated, the Democrats, with global warming and Syrian identity. refugees and identity politics. And you have people in West Virginia or the Rust Belt that are saying, hey, what about me and my family? I'm an American. Stand up for me. Mm -hmm. What if one uh, uh, male uh, senator said, women, just shut up? Uh, obviously, <laughs> that's not where we are in American yeah. culture at the moment, given yeah. what's going on. But to me, the irony in this is that she's right. I mean, Democrats, and I think, have to learn how to speak from the heart, especially in an era when you're going up against President Trump, who makes his appeals based on fear, grievance, mm. anger, oh, white identity. So he, he never mentions appealing. white identity, he, Jesse. Remember, you, talk, you <laughs> talked a moment ago about patriotism. He talks about nationalism, Greg. Yeah. He is making an appeal mm. that a lot of people fear is a... America Not in a first way towards is white nationalism. I mean, you look at the number of the kind of very much white nationalist groups that identify, that follow President but Trump. But that's a faulty logic because you okay. also have Let me you also have left wing commie oh, pinkos God. that love to be a Democrat. Well, look, so does that make Democrats Mr. wrong? Mr. No, Puppy, what you're doing is you're saying, second. look, if something you know, no, 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 this is an important marking. point. No, because I'm talking. You never stop right. talking. No, Juan. you were talking. You had a whole monologue. Okay, well, oh, would you like a monologue? Go after the okay. monologue, don't you right. dare. So here, here's the point, that if you're a Democrat right now, you have to say, hey, you know what, we can talk about health care. By the way, Sandra, that was the message, and a very effective message during the midterms. We can talk about health care, but then the Republicans and President Trump come back and say, oh, no, that's socialism. We're taking it apart, and they're damaging health care. You have to say to people, hey, what about... Pre and then you have this conversation, but until you say... Here's a child being denied treatment. Unless you can show that child, it doesn't have the same power as Trump making a wild-eyed argument and appealing to fear and grievance All right, and so let's just uh, dispense with this fallacy altogether. If Republicans like oranges, it's because a lot of people like oranges. If racists like oranges, that doesn't make Republicans <laughs> racist. It means that oh. a lot of people like oranges. Yeah. So that fallacy is now dead. 